<laughs> it's better than better man than me, Dom. But I did a line. I don't know what you think of this line, but I, Woody Allen, uh, I see the mention on stage, and this woman started pulling. I said, why are you this? And because what he did, the daughter, and all this I said, but I don't know. I said, but one thing you got to admit, he, he never was like she was hot. You know, I know, but that got a laugh. <laughs> when we get off stage, I'll tell you uh, Mark Tony Hinch was a bit. I can't say it on stage. But I'll, I'll tell you on stage when you tell me your thing on stage. Uh, Tony Hinch has a new bit that's fucking ruthless and killed me. And we came up with it in the car this weekend. We were on a road trip and uh, we were talking about something and he said it. And uh, I, I fucking died. I said, you've got to say that on stage. He goes, seriously? I go, you've got to say that on stage. Yeah, he's I'll, I'll tell you. We did it last night and the room fucking exploded. You better come back and do the show when I do it. Which show? His show. His show Go killed Tony? Tony? I don't like to work Monday nights. So. Oh, yeah. I have a schedule now. No, you gotta see the time. Right? Yeah. But I have a schedule now on Monday. Sundays and Mondays. Sunday is, yeah, Sundays and Mondays is like extreme family time. Good. Just, like, no, because you don't have these days. They, they grow up so fast not to get corny, but it's enjoy. true. Yeah, it's true. Um, I'm enjoying it. I'm, I'm happy. Good. It's pretty good. And I'm also, I think I'm a nicer person now. Uh, way nicer. We have much to compare with. <laughs> you little prick. It just makes you, uh, you know, Dave Chappelle said this to me once, and I think it was a really great quote. He said, not only has having children made me, um, made me love someone more than I ever thought I could, it's changed my capacity for love. And that's cool, yeah. Yeah, it's like my capacity for love is much greater. Might that make sense? Like you realize, like, eh, a lot of our struggles and a lot of the shit that we we go through in this life, it's, uh, a lot of it is about perspective, and a lot of it is about who's around you and what kind of loving environment you're around. And it's also having kids and not having the strain, the financial strain, the emotional strain, and the ignorance strain that my parents had and their parents had like ignorance yeah. is a big thing too like they didn't know how to raise kids back then of course they not. hit us they you know they yelled at us and they didn't know I mean, my mom did you know it was a common thing for yeah. people to hit their kids i remember bruce willis said to me one time to be a name dropper he said that, you know one of the things about having kids he goes this little girl i forget the middle middle one's name he said she would wake me up to walk her to the bathroom and, she, and, and to her I wasn't a movie star. I wasn't any. I was Daddy, because right. she's afraid of the dark, walking her in. You know. Yeah. And he said that really made, made humanized him, made him feel good. Because you, know, you know what it's like. You get stroked all the time. It's like sometimes you just want to be normal. Well, not only that, when Bruce Willis was famous, there was way less famous people because there was no famous internet personalities, there was no famous right. reality TV stars, there was way less famous rappers. And, there was way less famous comedians. Think of how few famous comedians there were. Well, that's why we all, like me and Dice and guys that were in Rodney Specials, we were really Because we became instant draws. I, I paid to see you after you uh, were on uh, Rodney Special. Yeah, you, at I, Nick's, right? Yeah, I went to see you at Nick's and I went to see you two nights in a row. Because one night, I thought you were supposed to be there and either you missed your flight or something happened and Dennis Leary was there instead. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and so we came back the next day and we saw you again. But, who, um, who were you with? A, a girl that I was dating. Her name was Stephanie. She was, uh, she was telling me what to do. Older. Oh, really? She was <laughs> the dominant one? <laughs> she was. She was the first girl. She was 25. I was 21. She's sick. She liked the dick, though. Look at that. Woo. Like a little bit of the old schlezzy. <laughs> well, that was what was exciting about it. She was the first woman I dated. She was a woman. Yeah, like, yeah. I dated girls before that. That girl was a woman. And, you know, she was fucking smart, too. I could tell girls were a woman's age. <laughs> yeah, she was, um, she was just intense. She'd tell me what to do with stand-up, too. She'd give me stand-up. Really? Yeah. It's kind of I saw that Seinfeld episode where the girl broke up with him because of his act. Oh, Can really? No, oh, no, so no. so fucking funny. Because, uh, I don't think this is going to work. He goes, whoa, we're having a great time. She says, well... Your act with the I you ever notice? You know, that's not my style of comedy. He goes, you're breaking up with me because of my act? She goes, yes, I am. <laughs> that's hilarious. Well, if you were a girl and you were a huge comedy fan, I can imagine 
if you were a girl and you just you love Chappelle and Bill Burr and Dom Herrera and Duncan Trussell and Joey Diaz and all these great comedians and then you, you start dating a prop act hey, hey. and he's the worst prop act yeah. Fucking stu he's got a soundtrack he has to play. Hit the music! And he fucking <laughs> drops down and comes up with an alpha. I said hit it! What's well, terrible know, so jokes? So Sophie told me that she would she couldn't go out with me if she didn't like my act. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, if you're a comedy fan, I mean if you're a music fan, how the fuck could you date a guy who's got terrible songs? Yeah. How could you? It would be rough. You know, if you're a a bad accountant, you know, you're a great guy, you'd probably still get a date. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's fucking terrible to think that someone loves, right? Well, it's so much more personal than the, the debits and credits, you know, it's like, yeah. your stand-up is you, a reflection of you, generally, I mean, if a good, good stand-up yeah. is, you know. One of the most personal things, I think music, stand-up, maybe writing, writing's pretty personal. Yeah. Yeah. But stand-up, a really good stand-up re reveals something of themselves. You feel like you know them. For sure. Something you relate yeah, to them. for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, there's more famous stand-ups today. I was talking with uh, Jeff Burles from uh, Live yeah, Nation. Jeff. Jeff and I were talking about the, the number of guys today and gals that can sell out big-ass theaters. And it's nuts. He's yeah. like, dude, 20 years ago, there was nobody. There was like a, a handful of everybody worked in clubs. And there was a few George Carlin, yeah. you know, a few Chris Rocks, or, you know, whoever it was at the time, that could sell out a theater. And yeah. now, like, fucking everybody selling out these theaters. It's crazy. Well, if they have the right social media. Social media. Um, but they still have to have an act, because they'll sell out once, sure. maybe twice, but then, then it's done. That's what happened with a lot of those people from... Uh, stand-up competition show. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, last comic stuff. Yeah, they went around once, and the ones that were good, like Lonzo Bowden. Eliza. Yeah. The Eliza's probably the most successful. She's done more, I think. She's had more um, specials. She, she sells out everywhere. She does good-sized theaters. She's selling out. She just sold out her whole tour. She probably has the most success. She does work hard. That girl kicks ass. She doesn't fuck around. She told me something so funny when she was on the podcast. Him and her, this when Jamie's still doing it. She goes, I have a great body. <laughs> she has sweat, sweatpants on a sweat belt. I'm thinking, well, I, no, I don't know. She show it for God's sakes. Wear a skirt. I don't know. And then she'd tell you some piece of shit for asking no, her show. No, but I mean, I don't, I don't know what to tell her. Like, yeah. you know. well, she's fun. She's an she's aggressive girl. When she was on my podcast, it's the, the fucking comments were hilarious. Like, men either love her or they fucking hate her. Like, I, her, the thumbs up, the thumbs down versus Eliza, like on, on the podcast, the thumbs up versus thumbs down. She got, like, one of the worst ratios of anybody that's ever been on the podcast. Really? Yeah. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed talking to her. I like her. I'm not threatened by confident, I would say cocky. Doesn't threaten me. Yeah. But for a lot, because I'm not threatened by confident, cocky men. I'm around them all the time. Of course. Um, it doesn't bother me. I don't judge you by it. I, maybe I feel like it's silly sometimes with some people. If they're yeah. too confident, too cocky, or too dismissive of other people, I think it's silly. But I don't get mad at it. I would have known. When I was younger, uh, someone that was like cocky, or overconfident, or just, you know, just. I would just, I'd feel threatened by it, or be upset by it, or I'd judge them, you know, in a weird way, where yeah. I'd connect all of my own shit to them. I'd get upset. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I definitely, uh, I, I definitely have trouble with attitude. Yeah. Like to work. Well, one of the things about you, Tom, you're always super supportive of you know, guys. I mean, oh, and girls too. You've always been like a real supporter of uh, Thanks, young Jeff. comics. You know, I, th I think you should be. You know, I think so too. I, I've, I've learned a lot of that from you. Oh, cool. Man. That's nice to say. I was thinking about Tiffany because t Tiffany means a lot to me. You know, I taught her at the comedy camp when she was a teenager. And I've seen her really? Her. Yeah, I've seen her through a bunch of struggles. That's you know, crazy. She lost her home. Kept trying to keep her family together. So I had her on a podcast, and she said, you know, 
That a dick. <laughs> <laughs> That's my biggest fear. Uh, it's funny watching her blow up. She's hilarious. She took to it like a duck to water. Oh man! Like we immediately got about a, confidence. A, oh, she's got massive confidence. Yeah. But immediate, like, like almost like she feels like that's where she was always meant to be. Like she's just waiting for the bell to ring. You know, when she did Colbert, honest to God, I was sitting there crying. I swear. Crying for happiness? Yeah. So that's awesome. A jealousy. I was bitter. <laughs> Fuck, how'd she get on this show? And I, I love Colbert. I, he doesn't even return my call. I've got Trump jokes, too. <laughs> <laughs> that's all that show is. Well, I don't think it'd be on the air for us for Trump. It would be on the air. I don't know, Joe. Yeah. They were dying. They were they were way behind. Not like all by right. like with my Nielsen ratings all of a sudden. But they were behind. Right? They were way behind. And then he went for it. Yeah. Now, when yeah. when he called the, the president's mouth uh, Putin's cock holster, <laughs> I was like, holy shit! I can't wow. believe he said that I on didn't the hear air. That. You didn't hear that? No. He went on this epic rant about Trump, and then uh, he said something about his mouth being Putin's cock holster. And I just peeked out cock, obviously. Yeah, it's pretty obvious what he said, but I'm sitting there like, what is going on with late night TV? Yeah, well, I know. Kim has been on one lately. He's been crying. And yeah, crying. <laughs> he is. <laughs> he does. He's, I think he breaks down like every night now. Uh, that's point good for ratings. That's really good. Well, oh, he's a sensitive guy. It's a good way to cut the commercial. He's a legitimately sensitive guy. Yeah. He's a very nice guy. I like Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel is a yeah. very, very good person. Like he, he's a genuine nice guy with a real heart and he really does care. You know, I remember he cried after the big shooting he was from the day. Did he cry recently? Was the school shooting? Yeah. yeah. That was brutal. Dude. She's fucking the girl that I go out with was there that night and she was in the truck. And all the people came running down into the truck. Oh, no, she was. So New Year's Eve, I'm with the Vegas shoot. Yeah. They, they had stayed there for a couple hours. They had everything under lockdown because they didn't know who had guns and who didn't. They didn't know it was one person or 50 people. Right. And she, they're at, she's at the trap, and uh, she got kind of traumatized by it. So New Year's Eve, we're walking outside, and all of a sudden she starts shaking, and she was having an anxiety attack, you know, about being in the crowd. So I was just fucking her, trying to make her laugh. But she was like, don't worry about it. And then when we're, you know, the fireworks, I said, all I really care about is fireworks. And you took that away from me because you were selfish and feeling you know. <laughs> but, but I got her laughing anyway. Yeah. Oof. The fucking, the, the the volume of them. It just it seems like every couple of months there's a new one. Remember when Columbine? We thought this is terrible. Right, right. it's going to happen again. Yeah, it's like there's so many now. You, you, you know, you get used to it, which is sad. Yeah, it's fucking crazy, and I don't know what the answer is. You know, I don't know if it's uh, tighter gun control. I don't know if that would stop them, because it would just make it more difficult to get guns. But would that be enough? I mean, but we're not doing anything. Well, the interesting I think thing we got to try I, something. I don't know what to do. I mean, and there's also.
taking casualties.
Ugh! 